You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. Mark Champion. My guy. What is going on, brother? The Mark Champion is in the studio, folks. This is, you are one of my favorite photographers in the city, in the state, mm. that I've ever met, honestly. I've been, it's it's cool because, like, I moved here. Well, let's, let's, let's introduce you a little more. So, you're a badass photographer. You're in the barbecue space. You do cool stuff with baseball. Is it's not minor league, right? What do you call that? Oh, like, Sandlot. Sandlot baseball. Way cooler, way cooler it's way cooler. Yeah. And then uh, we'll talk about all this stuff. Um, but I just got to give you that that pre gas real quick before we get started. Um, you own a, a creative. Uh, is it full service creative marketing yep. digital marketing company? Call it an agency. The A word. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Fine. Flint Field, right? Yeah. Texas. Flint, Flint Field TX. Hell yeah! And we'll get into all that stuff later. But I'm so glad you're here, brother. Thanks, brother. Honestly, we've been talking about coming. this. You're a fan of the podcast too, which is awesome. Shit makes me happy. Thank you for watching. Friend of the pod. Friend of the pod, brother. Let's just put that out there. Friend of the pod. Um. So I'm sorry. We were talking about. Uh, we were talking. I, I was asking if you ever watched the podcast with your wife. Uh, uh, before we started, and you were talking, you were telling me a story about something. Yeah, I can't get her to watch anything. I can recommend a million things, talk yeah. about it, and, and go off on a tangent how cool it is. Sure, that almost that almost does the adverse thing, right? Like the more cool you think I it think is, so. she's like, I don't know about this. I think so. Uh, for example, the other night when it was like Arctic in Houston, yeah, she goes, I want to watch something that's gonna make me cry. I'm like, go watch season two of The Bear. I've been begging you to watch it. It's awesome. She goes, no, I'm not in the mood for that. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. you want to cry? Like, sure. Yeah, there's some um, good cry moments in that. Yeah. I mean, there's some, you know, I don't know. I think she watched like a Lifetime movie or like one of those Netflix like C-grade movies. You know, I feel like a similar way with my girlfriend. Watching stuff isn't, isn't always the same, but just like general interest, you know what I mean? Like we just aren't into the same things. Right. And I feel like that is, there's a beauty in that. There kind of is like a beauty in that because like, you don't want you don't necessarily want it kind of no. can be a red flag if no. she's into everything you are like is she making this up you if know what i mean she was or whatever into hardcore and punk rock when i met right? her yeah no she would have been a groupie it would have you yes. know what i mean like yes not I, to say that there's not girls out there that are just like you know just into hardcore not a group that that, that exists but, but but your odds i don't know my musical likings, I will go and put her onto a band that she just falls in love with mm -hmm. and then like she gets me into taylor swift Right. So there's that. But, yeah, I'm glad she's not just like me because that would be very scary. Well, it would be boring. Very boring. It would be so boring. And it's like, you know, they say... It's like making out with myself. They say opposites attract, and I think there's like a there's like a little bit of a truth to that. Obviously, there's a, there's a breaking point where yeah. it's just you two aren't going to get along. But it was always cool because it's like my girlfriend always supports and supported everything that I do. But she doesn't necessarily think that, like, I'm cool because, <coughs> like, that it's cool that I do it. Right. And I've always thought that that was interesting thing where it's like yeah you i you know follow your dreams honey like i support you but it's like it's like but she doesn't yeah but she doesn't like she's not like infatuated with me because right. i'm a music guy or yeah. i'm a doing this or that you know what i mean go which off is, with your little band which is kind of cool show. because yeah. like that that kind of thing you know when people date people and shit for i don't know we're going off tangent here but anyway um so friend of the pod dude so i want to go back here so this is what i like to do when i have other photographers on here I want to basically figure out like when you picked up a camera and like what, why, and then how it relates to like basically the journey of like going full time. And we can talk about all different kinds of other shit. I have a list of things here, but it's like, I do want to, I do want to start with like, <laughs> like how did you pick up a camera? Like when, when did you decide I'm going to get into this or, or, or I like photography or like, you know, what was that? What was that moment where you picked up a camera? Man, um, I guess it goes back to probably high school. My affinity and love for photography started, right? Like going to live shows, going to shows as a 16, 15 year old kid. Metal and hardcore shows. Metal right? and hardcore. So you're a metal hardcore guy. Punk, you're just, we were, made, we were meant to be friends, dude. Honestly. Grew up in South Texas, mm -hmm. going to my local scene, um, and then seeing like photos from like before I got into this scene. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Somebody was documenting that. Right. I w I've always been infatuated with the idea of like documenting and cataloging things to preserve them for years to come. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a collector and hoarder of like baseball memorabilia yeah. and records and stuff like that. There's a fun aspect to that. I, f I feel um, so. Always liked photography back then. Always had an admire for, and an admiration for it. 
Um, never really actually picked up the camera then, but mm -hmm. I always knew I was eventually. Fast forward, um, 2013, I started a lifestyle brand called Ninth Inning. Okay. And we were um, kind of incorporating the idea of like what a baseball streetwear brand would look like. Mm -hmm. This is back when like street streetwear brands were like popping. Like yeah. I want, and it's funny again to add to the list of things of similarities. I like tried two or three different clothing companies. Okay, like not I, I. I don't think any of them made it to print. But like we made the designs, <laughs> we made the fucking Instagram, we like made the brand, right? Like we had fun with all yeah. that shit. And then and then uh, it just you know we didn't have money. So it's like that's when you're the, young, you're like, oh shit, this costs money. That's the milk and the cereal. That, right. That's what it takes. But um, I do remember that when when streetwear brand. Oh was yeah, it was popping. popping. Things LRG, like LRG, dude. LRG, oh Karma LRG. Loop, Karma Loop .com, LRG, yeah. um, stuff like that. So ninth inning was popping. We get started, and uh, I figure out I need a photographer. I need to start shooting all these uh, things mm. I have going on, whether it's product or um, actual like photo shoots or events. Lifestyle. So shoots. I went and bought myself a uh, Sony's first mirrorless camera. It was an A6400. Mm -hmm. I think I paid like 1500 bucks for it. Crop. Like, crop. Mm -hmm. No idea what I was doing. Yeah. Soon after that, spent some time with it, went to YTU, uh, YouTube University, mm -hmm. and self-taught the entire way you know, from then now. So here we are 11 years later. And mm. uh, can't really tell you exactly the equation how I got here. I just never dropped the yeah. camera. Well, maybe we can find. Maybe we can pull some memories out. But that's crazy because that is so eerily similar to like what I went through, which was like you had to learn through necessity, right? Because right. you needed a photographer, and you're like, "Fuck, we barely have money for printing T-shirts." Like DIY, do yeah, yourself. Yeah, so I have to learn how to do this, and that's exactly like basically I started like a little agency with my buddy who's like a good graphic designer it's back in Portland. Yeah, and then we got a client, and I was like, "Fuck, like I need to fucking learn yeah. how to do photography, I guess." Yeah. And then, but then you kind of like fall in love with it through like learning how to do it. That's what happened with me anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean. So did you? Like who? Like who was? What was the first time you made money from Oof. doing photography for someone else? You know what I mean? Like what did you? <coughs> did, were you just doing? Were you shooting bands for a hundred bucks? Because that's a whole grind. Like were you? One of my best friends in Houston. His name's uh, Ryan Taylor. He owns a uh, barber shop called East End Barber. He plays in a bunch of bands. He's been a lifetime friend of mine. Um, Excellent human being, model, model father, mm -hmm. model husband, great guy. Um, I believe it was one of those, hey, do you want to come shoot the barbershop for like a couple hundred dollars? I want to say it was around that time. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You'd like, been doing it for how long? From that point, about five years. Okay. So and, okay, like, yeah, sure. For I'll yourself, though. Right. Interesting. Um, so you were your first I don't, client. I don't recall if that was my first paid gig. But that was Ryan and Easton Barber was like my was my playground to learn my skill, to sharpen my craft as a photographer. I would have that place to go to on a monthly basis and shoot. Yeah. So if I needed to, you know, and shoot people doing stuff, shoot lifestyle photography yeah. at a barbershop. It's it's kind of fun. It's kind of sick. It's it's very get cool. behind the little Dude, the little jelly thing they brother, keep the brushes in and man, get some little get some frames in. I'm get, talking like a horizontal shot of like razor flattened out. Like oh, just let's go. Pro like product there. photography. You like were macro approaching macro shots like skin yeah. to razor like dude. You were approaching like a retail situation through like a like a product photography yeah, lens, lens like that. almost, right? It's kind of cuz it's like some people take a picture of a barbershop. They take a picture of, like, the spinny thing. Right, of course. And they just take pictures of, like, a dude sitting in the chair. Yeah. But, like, if you approach it through, like, a, how can we get up on this thing? Make like, that's that's how I think about, like, everything. Yeah. Like, when I see a piece of brisket, I'm like, how do we get up in this? I need to get inside the brisket? Yeah. I want, it, I want the brisket to be a landscape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, I, like, I, like I said, I don't think that was my first paid gig, but that was the first one that stands out. Uh, about a year or two later, uh, I think it was, like, during COVID, mm -hmm. um, Bianca and I went to go uh, vacation in Heiko, Texas. And the Airbnb we were staying at had, like, these horses kind of, like, around the area. And I shot a photo of the horses one morning. Like, sunrise, the uh, the fog was rolling in. The hu the horse looked really beautiful. Just fucking it was juicy. Kissing. Creamy. It was beautiful. Uh, I put the photo online, and this girl from my hometown was like, hey, uh, 
do you sell prints? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't. Why do you ask? She's like, oh, I, I like that photo. If you can print it out at like this large scale size, mm-hmm. I'll purchase it off you. I'm like, let's go. Word. Yeah. So at that point, that was my first time printing a photo at a large scale dimension. Like a photo that wasn't of my kid. Yeah. My kids, I mean, at the time, I just had one. But printed out the photo, downtown Houston, brought it back home. Bianca and I looked at it, and I'm like, this feels like a turning a turning point moment in my photography career. Yeah, seeing that work come to life like that. At that point was, okay, I can take this more serious now. Yeah. And from then on, it kind of just... was. Were you making money? Like, to, like were you living off of your clothing brand at this point like, no um good question um no ninth inning ran from 2013 to 2018 um i kind of paused and halted operation around the end of 2018 the margins for t-shirts is slim to none you're not it's making rough. it's so rough and it's when rough. you're putting everything into it and you're spending a couple of grand on design it's sad because and i yeah. tell bands this and like uh uh co- comic people that need merch like they're like, oh, I got this buddy that. Does. <laughs> it's sad because you can't. It's like one of the few things where it's it's almost impossible to right. support local business when you're buying fucking t-shirts in bulk. You need the the guy with like millions of dollars, com- million dollar company that has a giant warehouse that purchases hundreds of thousands of t-shirts so that they can give people the best price. Like that's what these big guys do. You have to go to fucking whatever.com that everyone goes to to get your t-shirt it's like it's so hard to get like you're basically going to spend way more money and fuck yourself out of making money if you like support your homie and it sucks like it's just look that's just like that's where t-shirts are just kind of like you just kind of have to like get it as cheap as you can from the biggest company you can find for uh, from a band perspective i agree yeah because you're not really a lifestyle brand, but more so a band with shirts that you want to put out yeah. and bring to the masses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might not be concerned so much with quality of shirt or maybe the True. print. That's You're different. like, dude, these shirts are going for 20 bucks. These kids don't care. Boom, right. this is for you. It's going to be cut up or it's going to exactly. shrink. Yeah, it's like- A couple yeah. of washes. It's it's good to go. But um, yeah, I stopped doing ninth inning in 2018. Um, people still ask for it to this day. I, I still see it on the street. I still see it out there. It's never too late for a we, comeback, baby. <laughs> and it's in the works. Hell I'll, yeah! I'll say it. it's, it's in the works. Um, Sneak preview. No, we were we we were not just a t-shirt brand. We were inside MLB clubhouses. We oh, had shit. the Texas Rangers were rocking our stuff during like yeah the presser. We had the coach in ninth inning the entire time. Um, just it it really took off over those you know five years and. At the end of the day, uh, my photography was taken off at the same point, so I kind of stopped that. But at the, at all that's going on, I have a full-time job. What were you doing? I was in a refinery doing inspection all over the world, all over the country. A so refinery? Was, a refinery. An oil refinery? Oil refinery. Oh, so that's where the baseball team that's, names come, come from. Sort of. Okay, we'll get into sort that. Of. We'll get into that. Sort of. So uh, from the age of 19 up until a couple of years ago, I did oil and gas. Okay. Um, like most texans do in south texas mm-hmm. you either go into oil and gas or you go like to the army depot in corpus um and it's great it took me all over the, the country went to the both coasts gulf coast um had the opportunity to go to houston full-time with my career in 2012 asked bianca to move with me she was my then girlfriend been there 12 years got married bought a house had a couple kids survived a hurricane nice. you, so it's you kind of did the whole american dream thing like you're good on the American dream, right? I like did you, it. You you did it. I house s- house car career kids taxes. Let's fucking play around now. Now let's let's do barbecuing in the backyard. Are you kidding me? Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's so go. that was uh, past, that's awesome. Past twelve years and did ninth inning as soon as I got to Houston, um, and that lasted a whole five. Stopped that. Started doing photography. Just wasn't making more. money or enough or like it was requiring a lot of attention and it was taken off and I could kind of project where it was going so it was either at that point leave my nine to five my career and go do ninth inning full-time or stop doing ninth inning and pursue my career right. and i pursued my career yeah so well, you had a family and shit so i had my my daughter at the time was was just born yeah. and uh I had to consider that right so absolutely i always had creative on the side i always did creative things on the side sure you know um since my early 20s mm-hmm. so um photography takes off start dabbling in that and then COVID hits and the world shuts down. 
for that weird segment of 2020 from like March to like mm-hmm. July when nobody knew what the hell was going on. We were all furloughed at home. We would wash our groceries. We'd go to H E B, come yeah, back and like shit was crazy. Strip down, go take a shower. You know, like you just don't. We just didn't know. Nobody knew. Nobody was giving us real or right information. It's like nobody every, knew. It was all yeah. But we sat at the house. We became really good baristas. We made margaritas <laughs> and we fell in love with ranch waters. We watched a lot of YouTube. Yeah. Watched a lot of like Yeti presents, Scott Blue stuff, and uh, so kind of got maybe a little inspo from that kind of stuff. From that down a lot. in that downtime, you just kind of used it to soak up a lot of info. I used a lot of uh, like a lot of COVID for me was yeah. walking around with my camera in Portland, desolate Sick. Portland, and I I got a lot of chops from that dude, Sick. and I lost a lot of weight too. Word, because I was just walking around and like you're covered in sweat, but you don't notice because you're just having a blast with your boy, just shooting. Shout out James, I miss my homie dude. <laughs> you know, like everybody has that fucking photographer homie that's like. I don't know if it starts with you or you meet him along the way and like it's I don't know it's he's like my photography soulmate like that's like, my homegirl Allie yeah yeah Allie Allie from yeah Film yeah Smoke? yeah she just and moved like, to like Colorado yeah he's still back in Oregon and it's just like dude like half of my creative juice is like in, like because he would just bring out is like, he the, the one that's moving here soon? no but okay. but the guy that's moving here shout out to Matias Matias is going to move here on my birthday in two weeks. What a great friend. Best friend ever. He has been my best friend since we were in like sixth grade. And he got a camera in, when he was in seventh grade, a uh, Canon Rebel XT. Like most And yeah. got, got uh, was taking pictures of indie, indie rock bands in Portland when that was huge. The Shins and like these bands were coming up. And in he, middle school? In like, 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 yeah. In like eighth grade, I believe, wow. he was published in like some like i don't know if it was revolver or vortex magazine some like big local music magazine so it's like this dude is like a he was always the photographer kid sick the photographer flex. guy very sick flex dude he's a prodigy so i'm basically he's been he's been he's his shit's been collecting dust because he's been living in a dark okay. you know stupid place with shitty weather and he's sick of it and like i basically got him out here got him a job at Leroy and lewis brick and mortar doing the doing i don't know what doing the beer with nathan and shit doing bar shit that's sick and and he's just he's about to come out here and get his first ever like apartment on his own he's coming out here with his boys networked i got people out here he's got a dope job he's gonna stay with me rent free for like a couple weeks while he looks for wherever he decides to live and then he has a pocket full of cash to throw down an apartment whenever he figures it out like it's just it's ex- i'm excited like it's like it's happening to me and he's also gonna you what a know, time to jump in with l and l by the way dude what i know a time i know dude great great group Dude, they're the best, and it's like you—it's like they're the part—they're part of the family. Yeah, like you're part of the family when you when you when you join. They take care of their people, and also it's like I was talking to Evan about this the other day. It's like you know, because they're they're they know exactly, like they know how positioned they are and and stuff, but they're also very like humble, and they're like you know concerned about all these things. They're trying to make sure everything goes smooth, and like, and I, I'm just like, dude, if you take a step back for a second and think about it. You're in the top five barbecue in Texas, which is the top five in the world, really. Yeah. Right. And so you're the only one that's opening a brick and mortar. So if you want to really zoom out, technically, you're this is the most anticipated restaurant opening in barbecue in the entire world. It's the it, you know what I mean? Like it, there's it's one it one, if not the like most anticipated barbecue brick and mortar restaurant that is opening. It's happening like in the next like month. It's, they're trying to serve first meals at on the first. Wow. They're pushing. It's like two weeks from now. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be a fucking party. We just did like a staff party in there. I saw that. Yes. It was fun. Sawyer and uh, Nathan hit me up last year and we're like, hey, can we get some Lone Star swag for the bar? I'm like, yeah, we got you. Yeah. Oh, let whatever you know, need. Let us know. We got you. Yeah. But uh, it looks like a damn university. Like it is. It looks it's so per, it's, sick. It's gorgeous. It's going to be so sick. But um, but yeah, anyway, so Matias is coming down and it's going to be this like I'm excited because like I'm I'm going to reignite his fire now because he basically like it, I was always right next to him our whole lives while he was taking pictures and being the photo guy never really had like interest in it thought it was cool we would sit there and look in his garage and look at photos and then and then i owned i owned a weed company for a while mm-hmm. i don't know if i told you about this or yeah, not. yeah i heard it on Kyle, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Episode. yeah so i i owned a weed company for a while and um 
Matthias was going through. So he was like, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I was like, I need photos and like, we need to hang out more. Like, I, so I built him like a little office in there. And um, it was crazy because like the, the warehouse was so shitty that like we bought, we just jumped for any place we could to get in with the, the green rush. You know what I mean? And it was like the only spot available. So we got what we could and just made do with it. But it was like whatever temperature it was outside, it was inside. Okay. Not inside the grow rooms because those had AC and heat, but like in the in the common areas, it was like ice, an ice box in the in like a, a hot box in the in the the summer, and so um, we would put little space heaters in this little room that was kind of insulated. There was a door we could shut, and so we just put space heaters in there, and we would just take pictures of weed and like just go through them, and like <laughs> he would edit them, and so I think like that's kind of where my love for like that process kind of came from and, and, and more than the process was just like being with him right. and like being a part of it with him. And then like, eventually we needed another camera. So I bought a camera and like, as my business was failing, cause that business just like, it's just a terror. It's a hard business to be in unless you have millions of dollars in overhead. And like our rent was $11,000 a month. And it was just wow. and, and and it was just crazy, dude. Bills were crazy. Electricity was like six grand a month. Like it wow. was nuts. And, so like I'm just like basically making like hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and I'm just handing it to my landlord. Like I'm just count I'm like money That's counter. Insane. And I would take we would take home me and my my partner, my my drummer, we would take home like a thousand bucks a month to try to live off of while this while we were trying to make this dream kind of work. And it just was set up bad from the beginning. We right. had a bad a business partner that we didn't agree on stuff with and and uh anyway, but so my business just starts kind of crumbling and I've tried everything I can and, and I just, I try to try to get investors. I'm trying to like to keep this thing going or whatever. Um, and, and it's not working and I'm just kind of like, okay, well, well, let's just ride this out. Like we still have weed in the, in the safe that I have to sell. And like, like, let's just, so we would just stay up until 4am and like my only solace in that moment, in those, that period of my life, that six months to not think about, fucking you know my my dreams being thrown away thinking about having to go back to working for someone else like my only solace in that time was spending that time with him in that room editing photos we'd take him back to his house and like we'd go in the hot tub and then go back in and edit more photos and fucking drink and like just hang out and uh and then like so i pivoted out of that when i saw that that was failing i was like all right well i need to figure i'm having a lot of fun with this so let's let's uh not to make this about me or my story, but it's like, let's, let's figure out how to make money off of this. So I go and I try to, you know, hit up, I hit up my, my buddy, um, who's always designed all those clothing companies I wanted to start. Mm -hmm. it, it was my, my buddy just trying to start them with me, designing the stuff for me. Right. And so we were like, dude, I was like, dude, let's sell your portfolio. Like, let's just put all your Nike stuff and all your shit on this portfolio that you've done. And then we'll send it around to people and I'll be like the sales guy. You know what I mean? Okay. And so we got this, this brewery client. And um, they were like, yeah, sure, we'll pay you two grand a month. And I was like, dude, that's a grand for each of us. You know what I mean? Like, let's fucking do this. And then I was like, Matias, like, I need you to help me with photography. So I was paying him. And then I was realizing, like, oh, fuck, like, I don't have the budget to pay him, too. And so, um, you know, basically just learned through him and then through, you know, basically I just, he was my avenue to picking up a camera. Right. And so it was like in those times we had and all that fun and then during COVID, i just like kind of honed it in with walking around town taking pictures of buildings and finding shit that i like to take pictures of right you know but but yeah i'm so excited for him to move here but now that he's been so rusty or i don't want to say rusty the boy's still got it okay the boy's it's in his dna okay he was a he's the, the way canadian hockey players are just <laughs> born that fucking way yeah he was he was he's a he was he was born into photography it was it's part of his dna so when he gets here i'm hoping that with the shit that i'm doing out here it's like it, it'll be like a little like mr miyagi like the 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 student becomes a teacher yeah. kind of thing and like let's bring that fire back dude Heard. and let's get you fucking loose so yeah i'm we're i know i went you. off on a tangent there but um but yeah we were talking about like the buddies that bring that that creative juice out in you yeah your your home girl Allie, Allie right yeah yeah i met her she's a rock star she's she's, she's a rock dope. star she, she got just, the utility belt dude, and everything she's just she's a hard ass when i see people like her work i'm like damn i'm not <laughs> like i'm not a i'm not like getting after it like that like everybody's got their own approach which right, is kind of kinda different too like yeah. i like to kind of hang chill 
hang back. And like, there's moments where you're like, oh shit, I got to get this. I got to run over here. But I try to minimize those for myself because it's like, you know, you, everybody, I'm not saying Ali's like this, but like, you know, like the overly stressed, overly prepared photographer. Yeah. That like, I have all these things. And then, it, but it's like, but like, then like the shots don't always yeah. like, like, it seems like the people that are the most nervous and most overprepared tend to be the ones that like, I have $20,000 of equipment in my bag. Yeah. And I'm going to give you six photos. Yeah. Versus I have a $800 camera and I'm going to give you a hundred photos. That slap. That slap. Exactly. Yeah. You killed Throne Smoke content, by the way. Bro, you killed, I want to talk about Throne Smoke. So explain to people what <laughs> Throne Smoke is. Throne Smoke is my love letter to Texas, or it was, RIP, right? We went strong for three years. It's going to come back. Shh. Um, beer, baseball, barbecue, bourbon, all the cool things I like about Texas, not Ted Cruz. Um, <laughs> so it's basically, when I say baseball, I mean Texas Sandlot, uh, this really cool thing I'm a part of, uh, and have been a part of since 2017, um, at this place called The Long Time, way out east Austin, out in the sticks. I so think like dope. Weberville area, I guess you can say, uh, Maynard. Um yeah, we throw down, bring out some of the best pitmasters, not just in Texas, and we'd have one or two from out of state would come in and um, good live music, mm -hmm. bring out some some local vendors that really draw and just have a good time. The whole vibe of it, though, can you pull up uh, Throwing Smoke's Instagram? the The whole vibe of it of it was so cool to me because it's so you. <laughs> and that that really is what it is. Like like you said, it's all the shit that you're into. Yeah. But like if you go look at your feed and like just like the stuff you like to take pictures of, like yeah. you you're into like you're into shit I wish I was into. Like textiles and like leather and like Americana. You capture this like Americana vibe with Earth, the whole yeah. event that kind of it's really I feel like it's an the more I get to know you and it's like it's really just an extension of you. You know what I mean? See if we can pull up some of these pictures, but it's like there's Allie's yeah. work right there, and then your video is is next, I believe. Or you go again. There you go. There's Taylor. Oh yeah. Some oil dog action. The oil dogs, the oil dogs make me want to play baseball. Just crack some It makes me want to play brother. baseball, dude. You guys just drink beer, fucking play baseball. You got sick fucking jerseys. <laughs> It's weird because it's like a it's like a band thing. It is like it's We're, like I want the oil dogs merch. I want to go to the games. Like I was sold instantly when I saw you guys and like the everyone looks like a band guy. You like got everyone, our t shirt right? The I didn't. I don't the think, death pedal logo looking one with the dog. I don't think I got a, a t shirt. Okay. They were all gone. I'll send you one. And uh, but I have a hat. Word. But have you seen the shirt though? I think so. Have, yeah. Can you pull up? Can you go to the oil dogs? Uh, is IG? there a link in there? Yeah, at the top. Yeah. Or if you want to go back, go back to the video. And then it's the, uh, you can go to the very top of the page. It says yeah. Oil Dogs right Oil up there. Dogs, yeah. Go up more. Uh, right yeah. there. Yeah, my buddy Jake uh, from here in Austin. Shout out Jake. Uh, made this really cool design right there. Yeah, Jake's phone. Oh, one. yeah, that's the one I wanted, but they were out of them. I got you. Hell yeah, let's go. XL, yeah. baby. Okay. I got that, you. Shit, that shit shrinks, shrinks and I <laughs> like to drink. You know what I mean? So Yeah, Throne Smoke was fun, man. It was Throne cool. Throne Smoke was uh, so sick. Just, I'm one of those guys that likes to do things... In a series or within a within a time frame to where I'm not repeating myself yeah. over and over again. So if I come out and do something, just know well, it's going to be you, for a limited amount yeah, of time. That's good. And then move on to the next thing. Yeah, you're going to do something different. The wheels turning. There's See, something I love else. That, though. There's something else in the in the works. That's, that's good. Similar to. I can't things. wait. You got to come back on here and promote it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Yeah. But and uh, but the uh, yeah, I just love. I love that it's just the whole. I honestly, and I'm not just. I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. It, I think it's the most fun event that I've ever been to. Like, and I've been to a lot of bar that one and the Heritage Fire one at. Okay. But that's because it was at Star Hill Ranch, and there was so much like everybody's cooking on open fire. But it's like, this was just like you had the you had the the barbecue royalty out there. The lineup was stacked, and it's just it was the drinks were kicking. It was it was all, there's baseball all day long. Yeah. Like ten games of baseball yeah. or something. Two, there was two games. Oh, but two. It okay. Felt like 10. Well, they're long. Yeah. I'm not used. Yeah. I'm not used to baseball, dude. <laughs> I used to kind of like it when I was younger. Like, <laughs> I never really got into it. Actually, there's a funny story. My parents were like, we're trying to make, they would always make me pick a sport. Like, you're not just going to sit at home all, all year. Like, you're going to pick a sport right. and fucking try it. And so I tried baseball. And um, I even remember this. I was so bored, like, in the outfield of baseball that I just, like, put my glove on my face and just started spinning around in a circle. 
You know, because it's like little league baseball. Yeah. Like the kids aren't hitting fucking flyers. No, it's a lot of waiting around in the office. Yeah, and it's a lot of go get them, Johnny. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, Sandlots. And Sandlots. My parents luckily were just like, okay, he hates this. Like Sandlot's different. It's a different element. It is. It's, it's fun. Cool. Since starting playing Sand, since I started playing Sandlot in 2017, um, I think my affinity, my love for like major league baseball, kind of fell off a little bit. Sort mm-hmm. of. My my team's the Rangers, the World Series champion Texas Rangers. Um, Let's go. But. Yeah, I still keep up with Major Leagues. I still keep up with my team. Um, I run a baseball podcast with my friend Chris Lee. Oh, that's sick. Uh, I n- didn't know that. No one's beef. It's from a Rangers a Rangers fan's perspective and an Astros fan's <laughs> perspective where we just talk shit that's to awesome. each other. Because nobody hates an Astros fan more than a Rangers fan and vice versa. It's like that and, and no Civil War kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. fun. Um, we just started it recently. It's pretty cool. But... Um, yeah, Sandlot's great, man. It's a different, it's a completely different element than anything you've ever seen before. It's a bunch of out of shape dads. <laughs> it's not a beer. It's like a step up above a beer league, right? What? What you have to explain this stuff to me, like uh, we play eight innings. Um, what's a beer league? Like a beer league is like a softball league where like guys just go like just to drink beer in the dugout and like. Isn't that? I don't want you guys. To- <laughs> Come well, on, like, bro. But like, we actually give a shit about winning, or we right. just, you know, it's a little bit more skill to it. You guys put on a show, like you're fucking, yeah. yelling and fucking. Yeah, yeah we got. You, car- you go got into characters. coach mode, dude. I do. You go into full like I glasses can't, on. I was trying to talk to you, and you were like, "Not now, dude." You're like, "Not now." Yeah. Let's go, nightmare. Get a hit. Yeah. Dude, somebody give me a lone star. Bear me, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Kenny. No, it was awesome. So, how do you organize? A team like that because it looks so legit. You guys are sponsored by Lone Star. You got the Lone Star patches. Yeah, no it's fucking too. sick. <laughs> yeah, can you pull up the uh, the oil dogs again? Uh, you can see it in the video. Yeah, yeah, the video in that picture. So the fucking merch is so fire, bro. You can tell you used to own a merch company. Dude. <laughs> You're such a pimp, dude. Look at all these tattooed fucking just cracking cans. Hot brother. boys, dude, throwing balls. Wearing black. Damn, this video slaps, dude. <laughs> I was wearing, like, damn. Wearing black in the Texas summer, though. Who does that? Dude, the oil dogs. That's who. Who does that? You guys are like, and it's like you're covered have, in oil. We right? kind of have, yeah. I, thank you. We kind of have the demeanor and sort of the the uh, <laughs> sort of the rep as being the team that doesn't shut up because we talk a lot of shit. The bad field. boys, the shit talkers. Yeah, the bad yeah. boys you can call us. Ninety um, percent of the guys on the team I either grew up with or met along the way, mm-hmm. um, either in Corpus or San Antonio. Look at those jerseys. <laughs> or so in Houston, um, my little cousin Rudy plays on the team. Um, a couple of guys we picked up. My uh, my guy Nightmare, uh, Austin. He's uh, one of the newer uh, players. Zane. These are guys that I met here in Houston. But um, or over in Houston, my little cousin Rudy cracking a homer. Um, Bro, it's so sick. It makes like as a guy that doesn't really care about baseball, it may I care about it a little more now after going to throw and smoke and like yeah. seeing you guys. I'm like sick. Like I have a team. Like I like the the, the dogs. And we dude. bark. We bark at people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone hits a home run when they turn third base. What's we're your thing that you say in that video? It's no no yards, no leashes. No yards, no leashes. That's fucking hard, dude. Come on, dude. Is that on that? That's on that shirt, right? That yeah, metal you, you shirt. You can turn the volume up. I don't think you. I mean, it's not gonna. Uh, actually, it, no, because we'll yeah, I don't know about this band's probably distributed and shit. Fugitive or whoever. they're from they're from Fort Worth. They're great. They're homies. Yeah, they're pro- they're. I'll probably get flagged for it, but. <laughs> But no, it's uh, yeah, you guys have a whole vibe, dude. I yeah. love it. It's totally like it's totally like you you blended all those things together, which I love. Like you love baseball, you you love clothing, and you had a clothing brand. You love metal, and that's kind of what the the team is. It's like yeah. it's this amalgamation. I think is the right word. I've been trying to use that word lately. Is that the right word? It's like an amalgamation of all these things together. Is that the right word? Yeah. Yes. But like. Yeah, it's like all it's just it's just the shit that you are into and you put it into this project and it was just it was just cool to see like cuz it went down better than like I'm going to I'll say I'll say it because it's a big event and I feel like I can like it was more fun than like all 3 days of hot luck. I went to all 3 oh, days. Oh, come on. No, no, I'm I'm telling like I know they had more fame, more more clout chef-wise and it was more of a foodie event. You can turn this off, Tony. Um but uh but like the vibe and the flow of it 
it was just like this is this is awesome. It feel it feels better than some of these corporate events. That I have appreciate this it. Giant Thank budget, you. and it's like it's. Uh, I feel like it's something that people would say you can't do that. Like you can't do that, Mark Champion. Like you can't pull that off. Oh, you want to have all this best barbecue, and you want to do baseball, and you want to have all these sponsors there, and you want to have you. You're just a guy. You're just a photographer guy. You can't do that. Throne smoke was an idea I came up with sitting at the house during COVID. Dude, that that was a crucial period for you. I looked over Bianca. I think we're probably like on a third ranch water on a, a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, what do you think about <laughs> that event where it's like, hey, babe, I got an Sandlot idea. baseball, like Texas barbecue, good music, and like maybe some bourbon. She goes, yeah, sounds like a plan. Nice. Like, One day I'm gonna do it. And the you gotta have a ride or die like that. She is. I love that. She That's is. That's how Sarah is. She too. is. And then the next year was the first throne smoke, and it was huge. And uh, yeah, went three years strong and. You gotta know when to go out on, t on top, and maybe I'll bring it back. And that's couple pretty years smart, and dude. I just I want it to be one of those things where it lives in a moment of time. Yeah. And here in like ten years, people are gonna say, "Oh, remember that one baseball barbecue event? Yeah. Did you ever go to one of those? They're it's doing like, another one. They can't. They're coming back. Yeah. You got to. Because if you were to repeat yourself every year and go on to like year twelve or year ten, it, you lose your gumption. You lose your flair. Well, and you almost have to focus on like doing bigger, better, and that kind of can screw it up, right? Absolutely. If you're like, oh, we have some big, we have fucking, you know, yeah. soldier boys here, like you know, like you're trying to get like, like, like it, it, it'll, it might be, it could become a completely different version of right. like what it. I didn't truly want it to is. evolve into something that I didn't yeah. want it to be anymore. So people are always trying to push it. With let that it live in shit. a series. Let it live in its own place and time, and move on. And if it feels right, five years, six years, eight years down the line, mm -hmm. sure, bring it back. But do it for the right reasons, right? Yeah. I guarantee by that time I'll be onto something new, something different, maybe another iteration of it. But it's always going to involve one of the elements that I'm into. Yeah. You know, I love Texas barbecue and I love Sam Lawton, Texas. Like it. I wish it was more marketable, but like a metal version would be pretty sick. Like if you have metal bands there, that'd be pretty rad. We won't talk about it. Um, but uh, but I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, maybe it's in the works. Maybe maybe. Um, but so when did the agency thing start? Maybe that's happening December fourth weekend this oh, year. Oh shit! You're dropping a date on us. Maybe now? it's uh, already in the works. Oh my goodness gracious! Well, maybe I'm work. Maybe I'll be working. I don't know. Maybe I'll be. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll have my camera. I don't know. Um, no, but uh, that's not. That'll be cool. The uh, the Flint Field. So tell me about the the agency thing like how did you because i go back and forth on like whether like we kind of have me and my buddy still like when i moved here we were going to start we rebranded we were going to start this thing like called a at creative like at at creative and like because he's andrew i'm taylor and it's just kind of putting blending our stuff together but the more i work with people like like evan and like john and like like i almost don't know if i want like like I'm trying to do a lot of different things. I'm doing the podcast. I have I have bands, you know. I'm doing the band thing. I, I'm I'm I like music stuff, and then I do photography stuff to like pay the bills. Of course. And it's kind of like I almost want to just do photography shit with my friends for work for my friends to pay the bills while I do this other stuff. I don't want to be like you don't want to pull the trigger on that next. I don't want to be a full time. I don't want to be an agency dude. You know what I mean? And so I hate it's like that. I hate that word. I hate it too. And I hate it, it sucks too because there's no other way of explaining what, what Flint Field is. Yeah, right. we are a um, a agency at the end of the day, but we're not an agency. When I think of an agency, it's someone who has zero um, kind of like connection with the brand that they're working with. It's more like we're only going to meet via email, right. and we're going to do the work for you, and then put you in a retainer. And then bang I, out six months, return the retain, return to the contract. If you want to renew or not, that's what an agency does. There, you're a number to a company. It's a factory. Yeah, it's a factory. And it takes the it takes for me the creative juice and the fun out of it. Like it's, it sounds dope because you see places like Wyden Kennedy and these big agencies, dude, and like the best dude, ones are here in Austin. Yeah, the, well, Wyden is like one of the best in the country, and it's dude. in Portland. Okay, and and that's where Andrew worked. And he would tell me horror, horror stories about how they treat the creatives at these agencies. Yeah, no thanks. And you've got basically a coked up like Instagram entrepreneur in bio dude that's a creative director driving around. He gets paid 300 grand plus a year and he's driving around in a Ferrari doing blow all night and doesn't sleep and comes into the office and he goes, we need this for Nike by fucking noon. Get it done. You know what I mean, and it's like, well, and, and it's like, how are you supposed to be having like that takes away the fucking fun of like all this the shit. Ferrari though? Yeah, red. <laughs> it's sick. Oh, it's Damn sick. it, yellow. Um, no, but it's like, 
yeah, like I, the more I work with people that are like friends and family and then like, like the relationship, like you were saying right. that, that we have is so important. And I think integral to like the quality of the product at the end of the day, right. That I'm making. And so it's like, if I don't have that and I'm just like wiping bullets of sweat off my, to get, make Nike hat, like, let's say we got a Nike contract. That would be the best worst thing that ever happened to me. You know what I mean? Like it would probably be great. It would be great money, great portfolio, whatever. And I would literally want to die for like, for like a, a like six months and then and we might fumble the bag on the surface initially it's probably like a oh, holy shit let's go yeah but once you get into it and you go through all the red tape you're probably regretting the decision right so um flintfield started out uh, august of 21 this goes back to like covid i, I feel like everything happened in 2020 the epiphany for me and this, that happened for a lot of people dude, dude. throwing like, smoke oil dogs it all kind of conceptualized can't. together in the same yeah. period of time I was furloughed from from my inspection job. I ran a group of inspectors for a third party contractor at a very major oil and gas company in central Houston. Um, furloughed per the client. What does that mean? I'm sorry, I'm stupid. Furloughed? Yeah. Uh, like we're gonna pay you sit at home. Oh, okay. Sort of thing. Like you're not, we're not laying you off, but you, we don't have any work for you to do, but we're still gonna pay you because right. we have money. To right. Pay you. Or uh, yeah, that's basically how it went down. Okay. Um, we were all furloughed. Um, so sat at the house and now that I think about it, we were furloughed, but I think we were getting the government, the, the rollout checks. Mm. Like if you made X amount of money, you would get this kind of check from the government. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we were actually getting paid by the client. Like the PUA but, thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, now, I got that too. Now that I'm thinking back to it. So tell Bianca, I said, it sucks that my, my um, livelihood and the livelihood of this family, like, you know, like, yes, my wife brings in a great income and then I'm bringing in my income. And it's like, why am I being furloughed at the house? And that's being determined by a corporation. I'm a number to these people. I mean, nothing. Right. I'm literally a notch in the belt for them. And whatever happens globally that is out of your control. I am. I am simply a, a speck of dust on their, on right. their whiteboard. So I said, give me a year to get out of this and I'm going to do photography. She goes, okay. So from June of 2020 until June of 21, I just banged out another year in inspection. Mind you, I'm a manager at the, at this point. I'm not in the field. I'm doing photography on the side, but it's taking up more of my time. Um, I got a call to go shoot like Fill the Dreams in Iowa, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I'm gonna go. What is that? Fill the Dreams, the movie site. Um, I don't know. It's like in Dryersville or Dyersville, Iowa. Uh, can you can you check that out for us, Tony? The Kevin Costner movie from the '90s, Field of Dreams. They both. I'm bad with movies, okay. dude. So I'm, I'm working on it. This guy has a farm in Iowa, and uh, you know, like if you build it, they will come. That, yeah. Like, okay, that's from that movie. Oh, okay, Ray Liotta. Okay, okay. It's great. Uh, James Earl Jones. It's a really, really good. I know movie. that. I know that from Wayne's World too. <laughs> right. That's what I know. If you book them, they will <laughs> and come. then was it uh, Jim Morrison? Mm -hmm. was, <laughs> <laughs> Jim. And they on the desert. And they have the, the, the Indian from the uh, the Native American yes. dude, excuse me, from the uh, great movie. From the from the the trash commercials, yes. the littering commercials, like crying. So um, they started. So the field's still there in Iowa, and I get invited to go a paid shoot to go out there with a company called Pillbox from Minnesota to not just the we were playing Sandlot. We we're mm. playing Sandlot baseball. Damn, on that, on look that at that field. baseball yeah. field, dude. So, and then MLB went out there and built a field uh, directly next to the original field. Um, not that cool. Um, but I got to go play baseball, play Sandlot on the field. Got to... Um, Dreams type shit. Oh, it was cool. And it was coming up. And I knew about it for months ahead. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is insane. So June of 21 happens. And um, I'm already feeling it. I'm like, I'm ready to get out of here. And then we went to, Bianca and I went to go see this guy named Benjamin Todd. He sings for a band called Lost Dog Street Band, I want to say. There in Houston, it was a Thursday night. And he pl it's like really good music. He plays like uh, like Coulter Wall type stuff, like kind of like, like, like folk country. Oh, Coulter Wall. Col it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like Coulter Wall. Benjamin Todd plays. I you said Coulter Wall. <laughs> uh, Benjamin Todd plays like a rendition of that. It's like okay. a more folk, like singer-songwriter country. It's really right good. And the very last song he mentions, he's like, hey, if you're waiting for that next opportunity to happen, if you're waiting for your stars to align, I'm telling you right now, they're never going to align. Damn. you got to make it happen yourself. Kick down that damn door. Now's your moment. Oh, stop spoke to you, Stop bro. waiting. And Lagora Bianca, she's like, oh, my God. 
holy shit he so music fucking pushed yeah. you over the edge you had yeah. all these and it wasn't even like a hardcore band it was like benjamin todd yeah but i think he's an, ex, he's an ex-hardcore dude i want to say but um the next morning i went in now i had a really great mindset like you know and i went in and everybody was shitting on me my guys my upper management the first two hours was just let's shit on mark today and i just sat back and i laughed and i'm like i i, I don't have to be here yeah, I'm, I got I'm dreams, doing, baby. My photography was already at the point where I was making as m- much as I was making an in inspection on my photos. Just off of off, off my side hustle of photography. Just off of one off jobs, stacking up. We were not one offs at the time. No, we, we you were, were contracted. Already, we nice. already had clientele. Fuck yeah. So I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. You know, and I kind of sat back and I laughed, and I'm like, okay. I grab. It was like 9:30 in the morning, and I just grabbed my shit. I told my number two, I'm like, hey, I'll see you on Monday. He's like, where are you, where are you going? I'm like, I'm out of here, dude. Yeah, I just walked out. I got dreams, baby. And I went home and I talked to Bianca about it. And I came back Monday morning, like in like shorts and like a, a hoodie, <laughs> like and office I, space. Yeah. <laughs> and I had my letter of resignation. I like went up to like my my superiors. I'm like, here's for you. Yeah, appreciate. You it. Gave him the TPS reports with the fish <laughs> on them. You're like, I don't like work anymore. And I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. I didn't give it two weeks. Damn. I literally i uh, I lit the bridge on fire and I threw the matches in. And I just crossed it. Dog. It's where I never came back to it. Because I wanted to burn that safety net. Because I think if I were to have left in a good note and I failed where I'm at now or had a, a slow point, I could know I would know that I could go back at any given moment and jump back in because I left on a – no. Burn the bridge. All or nothing. Burn the bridges. Burn Damn. the boats. Burn the boats. And I did. And that was uh, August of 2021. And Look at the boy now. I immediately created Flintfield. And we've been a re- Flintfield's been a thing since October 21, and I have not slowed down since. So I don't know what you can talk about and what you can't talk about, but what do you do with what? So one of your clients is Lone Star for Flintfield. How does that work with you with Lone Star? I'm curious. Um, because you, you explain you run. I don't even really know what what all you do for Lone Star. So I guess I'm asking. Lone Star Beer. They're owned by Paps PBR. Mm-hmm. Um, great organization. Uh, situated in San Antonio, Texas. Paps owns multiple brands. Uh, hands down the best beer in Texas. Let's just be honest. If you're not drinking Lone Star, you're not a Texan. <laughs> um, yeah, and Flintfield is a, a a contractor. We work with with brands like Lone Star Beer and create really fun campaigns and um, like the um, th- like the smoke service. Smoke service, yeah, yeah. Where That's you guys where you go- and I got tight with? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you went around to basically different barbecue spots, just posted up, gave out beer, and promoted Swag. the barbecue. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was a fun summer. Yes, yeah, th- things like Smoke Service, and we'll collaborate with them and uh, just create really cool moments and, and bring creative to the table and do really fun things together. Um, That's awesome. They're the best people to work for. They're, they're awesome. How did that shake out? Um, waiting in line for barbecue. Really? Yeah, Reese Bros in San Antonio. And the Lone Star marketing guy was there. Or one of them. One the, of them. Like three marketing guys ago, my homie Adam Love was in line in front of me. Dude. And it was me and, Mar- me and Maris left. He, my daughter Maris. I was like, hey, I think Bianca was doing like a girl's day that day or something like that. Or she was, I think she was here in Austin visiting her two best friends. And I'm like, hey, baby, do you want to go get barbecue today? I didn't tell her where it was. She was, yeah, okay. She was young. She was like two. Mm-hmm. And I gave her her tablet in the back seat, and we drove from Houston to San Antonio. <laughs> And we're going to eat Reese Brothers. Mm-hmm. It's like my first or second Still time having, having it. Oh, Brothers, my God. Dude. We got to go down there. So we go there, and this was before their brick and mortar. Waiting in line. The guy in front of me had a really cute dog. We start talking, and it's he's you know, one of the marketing guys, uh, I think, for the area in San Antonio. And uh, he's like, oh, hey, we follow each other. And I'm like, what's your name? Like, oh, I'm Adam Mark. Nice to meet you. And then from there, it just grew organically. We couldn't. It couldn't have been a better time. It's um, perfect. It just organically came about. Um, that working with friends shit, too. Shout out to my boy Adam. He's up in Chicago now with Paps. But um, yeah, it started there and it just grew. And then Throne Smoke One was that year. And then 2022 happened and we did a lot of cool things. And then in la- last year, I feel 2023, we did so much. We did um, this really cool thing called Armadillo Cinema. Uh, we partnered with Topo Chico where we went to like four or five different markets, I want to say. Showed an eclectic Texas movie at the bar. Like at the big screen, like usually bars have projectors or something mm-hmm. like that. We'll, we'll show like like in House of Rock and Corpus Christi, we showed Daisy Confused. We got with the bar manager, got with the uh, the venue owner, and say, hey, let's do a let's do a Lone Star beer special, like six bottles for twenty bucks in a bucket. Captured content while people are watching the movie, gave away free popcorn, and then had on like two musical guests afterwards. 
like honky tonk artists mm-hmm. to perform their stuff, but also do songs from the soundtrack. So Damn. we did that in four different weekends, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, or H- Houston, Austin, Corpus, Dallas. And that was fun. That was the beginning of, that was this time last year, Armadillo okay. Cinema. So you guys uh, going to do that again? Next year. Next year. Next year. Cool. Yeah. You can actually go, if, if you want to pull up my, my IG again, there's a video on there. Uh, you can kind of get a feel for it. But that was the first, this time last year, that was the first one that we really hit it off with in 2023. And then from there, it just built. And we did so much, uh, we did so many things uh, last year around the brand. Around, and that's just Lone Star. That's such a flex, though, yeah. to work with Lone Star. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's great. And it's it just seems like, it seems like they kind of like just acknowledge that your style mesh, meshes with the way they wanted to look too. And it's just like it, it's cool that dude magic can happen in a barbecue. Oh, line. absolutely! You kidding me? Let's talk about barbecue for kidding a minute. me. Magic can happen in a barbecue line, dude. The people you meet through barbecue, it's like some of the best people ever. Yeah, right. Uh, go up right there. That little video, Armadillo Cinema. Yeah. Yeah, so we we did all that and then captured contest cinematic honky tonk experience of largest Texas. So the idea was to bring an in person experience of like these really cool films from Texas. Like, was each one filmed where you were showing no, it? Okay, no, no, okay. like we did Friday Night Lights in Dallas. Okay, we did Daisy Confused down in Corpus, Urban Cowboy in Houston. Urban Cowboy was shot in Houston. We did it in Houston. Um, and then we showed uh, Varsity Blues in Austin. Topo Chico was a, also a brand partner too. It was really fun. It was great. Um, things like this is what we really kind of flourish in and had a great time doing. So, yeah, man. I love your whole your whole vibe of your your stuff that you make, dude. Like it it's cool when like I I feel like I can. I don't know if it's like a self-awareness thing, but it's like it's okay to acknowledge that somebody else's work is fucking dope and makes you want to do your shit better. That's like, how that's, I feel about you. That's totally fine, guys. I don't know I feel who needs you. to hear that, but like when you see somebody who's fucking crushing and you can go, God damn, that looks sick. I want to fucking grab my camera now. Like you, for example, something specific, you made me start thinking about editing warmer. mm like I'm a very I'm more of a cool neutral guy. Yeah. And like like you made me want like you you had it's like this like residual sunshine is all over all your shit. Like oh, you know what I mean? Like it's like it's like it and it has this like vintagey kind of like Thank it, you. like it, all your stuff looks like an old radio to me. I don't know how <laughs> else to describe it. All your stuff looks like an old radio to me. Like that's what I think of when I see all your shit and I'm like, god, Champion has such a vibe, dude. I'm like, I want to fucking No, I agree. You need there there comes a point in a creative's life, especially people in our space as, as creative be be open and be um, aware that the creatives around you that you surround yourself with, give them their flowers. Yeah. Acknowledge, acknowledge. Don't be like, damn. Don't see it in an envious or jealous way. He's killing it. I got to do better. Like, or, oh, like yeah. no. See it as like, damn. That's my dog. Like, yeah. bro, you killed it. This is sick. It's like, so much easier to be like that. Why? It's so much easier and it feels better and then you create friendships and you have cool conversations. Because like if you let it grow and it becomes spite or becomes sort of, some sort of like evilness in you towards that person, it's going to grow more and more. It's going to come out in your work, buddy. It's going to come out in your work and you're going to end up getting in your head and you're going to ruin yourself as a creative as people in our space have done many times. And dude, that is that is an umbrella. That is like an umbrella rule for any type of artistic thing, I feel like. Like music. Like, okay. you know what I mean? Music, yeah. comedy. There's lots of comedians that are that get mad when other people get opportunities or or they're, you know, maybe maybe they think that they're, you know, oh, they're not that funny. You know, whatever they um, don't shift too far. over. I don't want to get you out of frame, dude. Is he good, Tony? He's good, yeah. All right, cool. Um, if you need to move this thing, you can kind of just like adjust it. Okay, if you want to move this, it's kind of weird. You got to like keep this tight and then you. We got to get new arms. We got to get new stuff. That but this good. little thing back here is how you want to move it. Okay, gotcha. Basically, if you want to. But um, but yeah, like, like it extends to like I think all different kinds of like you can't. And I've been there. I'm not saying that it's like I have a perfect track record. It's like I was the I was the guy in the band that was like, well, I think we could, I think we're better than this band and that band. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, we should be getting the we should be getting those shows or whatever. And it's like, but I wasn't getting anywhere with that fucking attitude. And I only got somewhere when where there was like a sweet spot in the Portland 
scene or whatever when I was there. What would it was in like 2013 or something where like it was just it was just us and our boys, dude, like five, four, five, six bands that we alternated with that were just they were all bringing 50 to 100 people out. Like the shows were like they felt like national tour tour dates at these local shows. And it's just because everybody was like there was a sweet moment where nobody was mad at anybody's success nobody wanted anybody to fail we were just kind of building each other up i call it i call it the red solo cup era because we were just there's these pictures that are probably gone from the internet now and we don't talk to half those people anymore and it's like but it's like there was these pictures of us just like backstage at the hawthorne theater with fucking solo cups just like vibing and just like nobody cared it was like if we could have just kept that going and if any place can like you know when you feel that magic it's like you got to keep that shit absolutely pure you got you know what i mean it can't always be a competition or no. like a feast or famine thing it's it really like, should not be there's there's plenty of barbecue joints yeah i i do not get upset when i see another photographer go and take photos of this joint over here even no. when it's in houston it, it, there's there's plenty it's not your territory dude it's, you know what i mean it's nobody's territory dude there's so many of us in this game right now right there's no need to get upset or take it to heart because I'm shooting this or that person's shooting that. And in that. fact, we need more good ones. I'll fucking teach people how to fucking, you know. It's like, I, I'm not saying that there's more bad. I'm not saying there's a bunch of bad ones, but I'm just saying it's there's like. There's some bad ones. Yeah. But I'm just saying we don't, we we need more like dope people. Because yeah. like the barbecue, it honestly doesn't even matter if your shit's not great right away, but you're a dope dude. Yeah. You absolutely. could go far in barbecue, absolutely. to be honest. Because you'll get good quick. Personality goes a long way. Dude, it's it's odd. That, seriously. Personality goes a long yeah. way. Yeah, you might meet somebody in a barbecue line. That who was your first barbecue? What was the first barbecue joint you tried when, when you moved here? First barbecue experience I had before I moved here or when I moved here because I came down like in a year and a half span before I moved here. I came down like seven times. Shit, three, two or three to play music, and the rest is to hang out. My buddy moved here. Start Pat started working at Leroy and Lewis, and so he would he would basically he I always called him my barbecue shaman because he would take us around to all the places and yeah. he knew everybody because he worked at Leroy and Lewis and had been here for a couple months and so we, he would take us around um I I want to say Leroy and Lewis is probably the first the first Texas barbecue experience I had it's a good one or no the first barbecue I ever ate in Texas I think was Franklin because he it was during COVID when he had or like right on the ass end of COVID when they they were doing um you had to order like 45 yeah. minimum 45 days out and so he did the pickup order like yeah. before our trip, and then we landed, okay. picked up the Franklin, and I think we ate it like right there uh, at our shitty Airbnb or whatever in the yard in the Texas sunshine. I was eating Franklin barbecue. It's a great inception. Into I was it. eating Franklin barbecue off butcher paper on a shitty mm. piece of lawn furniture with that hot Texas sun beating down on me. And during COVID, in March, it was the day. It was like a week after the mass mandate got lifted, and Portland was still locked down as fuck. So we were just like. This is the best time of our life. Yeah. This is we're free. <laughs> yeah, we've never seen felt anything like this. this is amazing. You know what I mean? And so That's dope. And uh I think I just fell in love with this place ever since then, but what about you? What was your first barbecue experience in Texas? Growing uh, up, growing up, you growing, growing up yeah. in South Texas, we had um and I've told the story before to a couple of people. Um we had this place called Joe Cotton's. I grew up in Corpus Christi, which is from here it's 3 hours south. Mm-hmm. Um Joe Cotton's was in Robstown, just out in the outskirts of Corpus, and they were first place I ever saw somebody bring you out barbecue on wax paper, mm-hmm. which is b- predates butcher paper. Um, I wouldn't call Joe Cotton's craft; it was just true to South Texas. The word craft wasn't a thing back then. This is like early '90s. Yeah. Um, Joe Cotton's was my first like experience seeing barbecue served. That's like almost like rich, like a spiritual thing. Mm-hmm. Or this is like this is community. This right here is what it means to be a Texan, you know. Um, the place burned down later on, but like, oh, yeah, it's gone. But uh, there That'd is be happening. There is renditions of it. There's like a uh, there's a, another version of it now. I'm not sure. It's like distant relatives of the original owners. But growing up eating that, I would go there like when I would make like sh- like you know good grades or like a birthday, we'd go there. Yeah. Um, so that was my first like love of barbecue. Joe Cotton. Joe Cotton. It's not around anymore. No. Nah, oh, okay. Nah. But there is a version of it, but it's not the same. Um, yeah. And then just growing up with friends, going to meeting up, like going to Lockhart, going to like Blacks, or going, you know, telling the homies, "Hey, let's go to let's go over here. Let's go to Snows." Mm-hmm. You know. And that was pretty much like twenty, I don't know, fifteen. Yeah. Twenty fourteen, sometime in there, and then moving to Houston in twenty twelve, 
I'd pay attention to like what was going on. Like Killens was the first one to pop up, and I'll go eat Killens barbecue. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. This is really good. Yeah. And then as time went on, just started paying attention more and more, and then it just became this thing. Because Ronnie Killen was kind of like the Aaron Franklin of Houston. He was the first one to really come in and like culturize it or make it a craft. Can you kind of explain it and break it down maybe even for me? Because I might not know a lot of this stuff yet still, but it's like, can you explain? Because a lot of people that listen to the podcast aren't from here and they don't understand. They don't know about like they think barbecue's barbecue. You know what I mean? And it's like they think but when they think the word barbecue, they think like grilling burgers, a lot of them. Of you know what I mean? And it's like, so what what did Franklin do? That was di- like different and what was happening before Franklin. If you if you Man, I don't think I have I own the pants to make that okay to make okay, that okay, okay. But I, I can just even tell just you, your understanding. He made it. it cool. He he revolutionized it. Okay. And and started the fire, started the initial fire. Yeah. And then came others. Uh um, how did he make it cool? Like just through marketing, through Man. Just I couldn't tell you. You couldn't tell me. I c- yeah. I could not tell you how we'll he ask, did it. We'll, we'll get John Bates in here. We'll John John could probably talk more to it because yeah. John's an actual pit master. I'm not. Okay. But Aaron just made it w- like world known. Yeah. He made it a thing to where people are now looking at Austin as the the barbecue capital, if not before, of the world. Yeah. Austin area, including like Lockhart. Lockhart right. Like Lockhart's you got, basically. You got your OGs. Yeah. Lockhart will be part of Austin soon. <laughs> it's grow. It's growing o- over there, dude. Brother. <laughs> Austin is spreading its wings, baby. The area between Austin and Lockhart, I feel like it's just gonna like slowly become its own little thing, mm-hmm. and it's gonna become one big me- like megatropolis. Yeah, it's gonna be a DFW between yeah. here, San Antonio, and Lockhart, probably. Yeah. So Lockhart's tight, bro. If That's I had cool. money for a house, I'd, buy, oh. I'd I'd throw it down. I'd buy the shittiest house in like I'm fine yeah. in Lockhart, and just tear it down and just sit on the property. Yeah, because <laughs> that shit is gonna be booming, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I was there. We were there for the Texas Monthly. Which is like they have Texas Monthly. We've talked about on the podcast before. They release a list every four years of the fifty best barbecue spots in the state, and then every like f- every winter they do uh, a festival with all fifty barbecue spots, posting up like giving out food, and it's it's cool. It's too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's too people roll around with those fucking like to go metal trays <laughs> that are like this deep, and they're just like getting all the samples, and then they go sit on the picnic table and eat until they fall asleep. Yeah, it's wild. But I no, sh- it was it's it's a it is a spectacle. It really is. I got to shoot it two years ago for Texas Monthly, and then I missed it this past November, but I uh, heard good things. Yeah, it's a fun time. Yeah. But but so be- people basically don't understand the difference between, like, old school Texas barbecue and, like, the new school like, or, like, the, the, Aaron, the post-Aaron Franklin era, basically, right? Like, I think a lot of people that don't live here and haven't – like, you, you, once you, if you go to Lockhart, you see the barbecue is, like, just prepared differently. They're doing all different kinds of cuts, brisket. The brisket there is called Claude. Yeah. Claude. Like, you're not going to get the same experience that you get here, which is cool that it's that different. You've got a big variety. You've got old school and new, new school here, right? You've got the, your OGs that are still around doing it their way, mm-hmm. and then you've got the newer spots that's bringing their culture to it and applying their upbringing and their ethnicity to it. So sick. And it's amazing. Like Don, shout out Don, dude. Let's talk about let's talk about our boy really quick. The man. I got to get Don back in here because yeah. he was still. We were still working out the kinks. We didn't have the space yet, so I got to get Don in I'm here. I'm so fortunate to be in Houston, to dude. To, you are. I'm jelly. To, <laughs> I'm mad jelly. Sunday was tight, dude. Dude. Sunday was well. So sick. Matias is a big uh, Asian food guy, Brother. food guy. So when he moves down here, we're gonna go to the the next one. We're and gonna be was, at the next. You know, what the next one is. Uh, probably middle of February. Middle of February. It was so cold on yeah. Sunday. Don from Koi Barbecue, we're talking about the brisket pho. He just oh, dude, yeah, it's perfect Thank season you, for it. Perfect season for brisket pho. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pull amazing. up some pictures of uh, of uh, Koi Koi Barbecue. Pull up Koi's Instagram. But but yeah, dude, uh, it's just it's cool to see. It's K H O I. Even with stuff like tacos and stuff like yeah, it, it's cool to see like. I didn't realize that there was that that tacos could be that diverse, like that many different little tweaks, right? There's so many different little tweaks. Each, that complex. Each, each little taco place is different. Yeah. You go to Quantos, yeah. to- totally different from uh, Reseda's yeah. or something. You know what I mean? It's just like K K H O I. Oh yeah, K H O I. Yeah, top one. Uh, right? No. No. Why not? Delete the uh, the BBQ. It It should pop up like first on mine. Pop up there it is. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's spelled out. Yeah, so Don is a uh, Texas native. 
no. right? Or is he from? He's where from, is he from? He's from Vietnam. Oh, he, so he's yeah. from Vietnam. I, th- yeah. I wasn't sure if he was born in Texas, no. but his family was from here. Yeah. So they moved. He moved here. Yeah, when he was a kid. When he was a kid, yeah. grew up in Houston. Um, I believe so. Yeah, and I he's just so. he's always, he's just like blending his family's Those are my photos, cooking, yeah. his family recipes with. That's it's amazing. A, that's a whole hog, like basically spring roll, right? Sort of, something like that. Yeah. What's it called again? Bot. Uh, Don't get me lying. Yeah, I can't say okay. it. Um, these little rolls. So you were there. I mean, last summer when it's right there. Them. Bon Bon Quan. Yeah. Yeah. Those are crack. They're dude, so they're good. so good. He cooks them. that whole hog. Yeah. That's so crazy, dude. Yeah. Don is such a savage. I love Don. Yeah, it's he's, great. He crushes, dude. Shout out to Don Lynn. He's the coolest dude, too. He is. Um, shout out to all the Koi team. Shout out to just all the cool barbecue TJ. guys, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, the Koi team is so cool. Yeah. TJ. Uh, yeah, dude. I love all those guys. So much fun. Every time we go down there, it's fun. Um, I told him I was doing the podcast the other day. Don? No, TJ. Oh, TJ? He's like, Mark, how would you describe Taylor's podcast? I'm like, it's like a dollar store Joe Rogan. He's yeah, like, dude. <laughs> That's the best explanation I think I've ever heard. <laughs> That's a compliment. I'll take I'm it. Like, yeah. Yeah, dude. We're just going for Dollar Tree Rogan. That's Let's not go. a lot to ask for. Let's go. That's not a lot to ask for. Yeah. No. Um. So you were in like hardcore bands and shit too. Never played in a band. You never played in a band. Never played. You just in have a band. love. You just have the love of the game. Just started going to shows at 14, 15 years old with my friends mm-hmm. and. Supported my local scene, bought merch from all the bands, touring bands. You're that. You're that guy. I'm that dude. You're that I, dude. I would go off as a kid. I, you know, uh, traveled out out of town with other friends to go see tours that were coming through, but not to Corpus. We go to San Antonio. We drive to Houston, go see shows, and come up to Austin. Stuff That's like in- that, so. interesting that you've never been in a band. No, never was. Why? Never. Why do you think you didn't? Never. You don't play any instruments. Never picked for up fun? any instruments. No, just no? talk shit. <laughs> Dude, you could be. A, you could still start a band and be a front man. Right I have now. too much going on. But I have way you, too much going but on. But when to, you don't, yeah. you know, when you don't I have the oil have dogs. Much. That's my band. The oil dogs is yeah. your band, dude. <laughs> the oil dogs is your band well, for we're sure. The, we're the. <laughs> someone got on Twitter. My, my, shout out to my boy, my boy Iceberg. I think last year, the year before, he put on Twitter Texas oil dogs. Hardest hardest band in Texas hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do look like band the Shout band mates though. It's so funny. Yeah. That dude with the long fluffy hair and the tattoos. Oh, Zane. Is that his name? Yeah, he's I don't getting know. married Sunday, man. That's gonna be fun, yeah. dude. Yeah, that guy's just I'm like so you stoked. look at that guy and you're like, I want to party with yeah, that guy. Yeah, Zane's dude. great, dude. Yeah. Zane's the man. Hell so yeah. all your boys are cool. Grew up going to shows, grew up uh in the scene. Um, never really grew out of it. Thirty five years old, I'm still going to shows. Going to one next weekend in, in New York. That's good, bro. Um, yeah, it's great. Is, it's that's what keeps you looking so. That's why your skin looks so good. You I know what I mean? That's what yeah. keeps you looking so young. I got to be more like uh, selective on which ones like I want to go out to, like on a, a school night. But you know, right. I got two kids now. It's not like I can go to every single one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love what I do. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about something. The conversation we had over text uh, a while ago. Um, it's just kind of a thought that I've been thinking about recently was like with creatives and stuff going kind of back to the agency conversation of like you know trying to work working you know people whether you want to work with these like big nike clients or work with your you know your your friend clients that like are are gonna really pull out your creative sauce and just make for a more enjoyable time you know working for these people it's like i was thinking about it recently and i'm like man i've got you know these these clients are dope that I have. And it's like, I have a good portfolio now. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's like, I was thinking, it's like the clients don't really make your portfolio like you do. Like, I don't know if you remember me talking to you about this, but it's like, I, I would, it's kind of like a bit like a perspective change a little bit, but in like putting the power kind of back in our hands a little bit, like, it's not just about who you're shooting for. You know what I mean? Like the, because I feel like a lot of people, like they just want to get that client. They want to get that client so they can put it on their portfolio. And it's like, but it's about what you do with that opportunity. Of course. Like yeah. if the client gives you the opportunity and it's not to say that it, that, that doesn't matter because it's huge, but it's like, it's still on us to like make that a portfolio piece. Absolutely. You know what I mean? A lot of creatives in our space, especially just want that tag. They, they, yeah. they, they're worried about, and crave and focus on the tag on the post yeah. as opposed to the actual content of the post. Pictures look like shit. Video, not so great. 
because all you cared about was the post and tag. And the fact that you were doing it for them. You know what I mean? It's not even at this point. It's never about just the client. It's about at the end of the day, the content. And let me give you an example. A dirt moving company from down the street says, hey, Flint Phil, we want to do a video on our company. We're fresh. We're, uh, you know, four months old. We don't have any marketing on our website. What do you guys do? We move dirt. We move dirt. We go and like <laughs> we put dirt on like new properties so they can build and whatever. You know, something simple as a dirt moving company. How can you as a creative go in there and figure out how to make this dirt moving company look sexy on your phone, on your on your website? Mm -hmm. So it's my job to come in there and create content for that company. Doesn't matter who that brand is. I'm going to give it my like hundred percent. So, would I treat this company any different than I would this well-known brand over here? No. Yeah. They're getting the same treatment. So, when it comes to sharing that content, the focus has to be there and not so much on the tag itself. Yeah. In this day and age, we're always wanting to post and tag and catch that clout to the next level, mm. but you're you're missing the focus on the actual content itself. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And for me, it's like everything comes back to like, ha like it's like you have to have fun with it while you're creating Absolutely. it too. And Absolutely. A lot, and it's like a lot of, the, that's the thing too, is I wonder if a lot of these guys that have trouble either getting their stuff looking to a certain point or getting hired or something, it's like, you know, getting clients, getting gigs. It's like, <clears throat> are you having fun? Or are you just trying to treat this like work? Are you, you, chasing and you, the, are you chasing the dragon? Yeah, you, you want yeah you're chasing the dragon on this like I I don't want to work a boring job I want to work a, a fun and easy job and people think that like what I do is not fun <laughs> dude it's honestly <laughs> I have I'm let's in, talk about that for I a have second. I have fun I I do have fun I will I will not say what I do is not fun it's the most work I've ever done in my life yes you yeah. work you work I, I'm working more now doing Flint Field but I'm creative I'm creatively pleased because I'm able to floss my creative skills mm -hmm. and use the really the really fun part of my brain and my operation to what I want to do as opposed to a nine to five desk job. Right. Sometimes there's stress around it. Sometimes there's parts of it that I don't enjoy. That's just part of the game. It's what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. But when you turn your passion into an actual career, those are things that you sign up for and that you say, you know what, I want that. Whether it's the good and the it's it's the bad with the good. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, like the bad being like an afternoon off right. versus a weekend. Right. You know what I mean? Like I can't. Right. Like I have like a lot, most of my friends work like nine to fives. And they're like, hey, dude, it's Friday night. What are you doing? And I'm like, dude, I've been putting shit off all week. Yeah. I'm starting my work yeah. week right now. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I'll come out and uh, for a drink and then I got to fucking go back to work. It's like. Yeah. It, it's that classic thing that's like people say you never if you do what you love you never work in a day in your life but that's not true you work twice as hard you work ten times harder you know what I mean if when you love in, what you do when you're in our space you have no holiday no, you have yeah. no I mean you have no no real structure of what a day off looks like or eventually when you take a day off it's because you your body needs it you're like you know yeah. what Mic drop for the next three days. I'm out because you know my what? My kids haven't seen me in three days. I've been that or I'm about to explode or yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. So or my work is fucking looking like shit. I I hate my work. I'm sick of looking at my shit. I'm at the point now where I'm forcing myself to turn my camera on and go shoot, even though I'm not being paid to. That's yeah. where I, that's where I am, and I and I love it because taking on passion yes. projects. And taking on things that I want to give my all to, even though it's, I'm not getting paid for. I have to keep my my both of my edges on my my sword sharp. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it's got to stay like that because if I continue to just be a creative for the sense of getting paid, I'm gonna lose my rhythm. Dude, I, I don't hundred percent. I don't want that at all. You get all. burnt out. You get burnt out, and you get you get really, really um, dull. Yeah. You get really dull as a creative, and you lose your you lose your sharpness. So taking things on that are your interest and putting your work towards it, even though you're not getting any kind of real compensation, mm -hmm. you know, um, that's kind of why I do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just another creative outlet. Yeah. And, and it gets me stoked when I'm done with this. I'm like, I'm already hyped. I got shit. I got to edit. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, we're going to go do some, we're going to go hang out for a little bit, but yeah. it's like, it's like, I'm going to like these kind of conversations get me, they continue, it kind of throws another log on my fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's totally true. I was doing that, um, like before I did stand up, uh, 
and was getting get, you know got into trying to do stand up and getting better at that it's like um just i i was like how can i be a part of this like right now cuz i'm not funny enough to be a door guy like i don't know how to i don't i've never done stand up door guy's this, funny door guy yeah so a big rite of passage for like comics is becoming a door guy okay. at x club you know in any club like the, the all of the like like tony hinchcliffe and all these guys a lot of them were door guys at the comedy store and that's how they honed that's how they sharpen their fucking gotcha. knives and they pay their dues they pay their dues like a motherfucker gotcha. guys. that's why they're that's why they're so you know fuck you yeah. i'm rich now because and they get they deserve to be because they fucking ate shit for so long you know what i mean and so that's that's part of the the grind and it's like i i wanted to be a part of it and i i had never done stand-up at that time and i was like so i can't you know i can't i'm not don't have the balls to go sign up like what can i do i can take pictures i can take pictures of these guys they don't comics are all there a lot of them living in their car they moved here pursuing a dream like they're some of the hardest working like true maybe some of the only true starving artists you know right now like like because a lot of people are like i'm i'm an artist but it's like you live with your parents and you right. sell your paints paintings on etsy or something right. like your life's pretty chill you know these guys are grinding hard it's it's yeah. it's admirable it makes me want to go harder with yeah, music sacrifice. with yeah it makes me like like i'm always thinking about all these dudes that i know that are my that are friends that i've made recently that are working 10 times harder at stand-up than i'm working on anything that i'm doing and so I'm always thinking, like, fuck, I should be working as hard as they yeah. are at these different things. And it's inspiring. And I was like, how can I get back? I'm like, I'm just going to go to shows and start shooting wherever they'll let me bring my camera in. And, you know, I think that that helped me just at least it was like an immediate give back. Like you were saying, doing shit for free. I just would go in there and they'd be like, how much? I don't have money. How much do you want to pay? I was like, no, don't worry about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm just this is for fun because I, I got my money from from right. from food, food photography and I was doing some real estate stuff here and there. And it's like, let, let me just I, I, let me do this. I just need to do this, please. Yeah, <laughs> it's for me. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like and um, and yeah, I mean, that that always would kind of cleanse my my palate, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? From all from the it's it like therapeutic. It's, dude, I think it's the only job where you have to do a different version of it to continue being stoked about like whatever you're getting paid for. Like yeah. you got to go do it for fun. There's not a lot of jobs like oil inspecting. You would never like just, you know what? I'm going to I just need a little inspiration. I'm going to go check out this oil rig real quick in uh, South <laughs> Texas and just just look at it. I'm just going to go yeah. out there and do a little inspection just for free. Nobody's even tell yeah. me to go. It's probably illegal. But it's like no, like there's not a lot of occupations where you when you're done doing your work like in order for you to for a lot of people in order for you to like keep being stoked on it you have to fucking go do free shit yeah. that that is like a little outside the box yeah yeah i feel you what kind of things would you do when you go or what kind of things do you do when you go and do free shit or outside of the box it's just other, shooting other barbecue places or no um like bar, like the barbershop. It comes back to to Easton Barber. Yeah. I just I just did some. I mean, not to put it all out there, but like I just did some stuff for my, my boy Ryan, just to keep my edge sharp. Iron sharpens iron. That's what we mm -hmm. say. But bar, it always comes back to Easton Barber. I'd pull up there and just to keep keep it going. Um, oil dog stuff, baseball stuff, um, just things like that. I just I I try to find a passion project and just keep it all year. Um, I started one last year and didn't really get around to to continuing it. Um, it was just shooting neon light, neon signs in Texas, like at honky tonks and bars. Oh, nice! That's uh, cool. I did, I did a couple. I did that for a couple months and then it kind of laid off. But um, just things like that, just to keep around, keep keep going, mm -hmm. just keep you know keep sharp. So I feel like you have a bunch of cool shit in your office too. <laughs> like you be taking little video clips of like a cool, a cool hat. And I'm like. Damn, Mark's got cool shit in his office. Brother, that office is uh <laughs> Bianca calls it constructive clutter. It's <laughs> it gives her anxiety, she says. Um it's it's just inspiration. It's it's baseball, it's records, it's posters and prints. Um my little boy major, he's almost a year and a half. He'll come in there and just like look around and be like, What can I grab and break? Mm -hmm. And I have a bucket of baseballs right there. And he'll he'll reach in the bucket and pull out every baseball and just yell at me and go, Ah and like yeah. you know, so it's um I'm very fortunate and lucky to be able to do what I do and be able to work from home most of the time yeah. when I'm not in the field. And yeah, baseball seems like 
correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like the most like aesthetically it's the it's a sport with the most aesthetically going on. Like it's got this like it it's maintained like football has gotten so like uh, like pro football, you know, the way it it's so glossy and new and shiny like it's like an iPhone or something. But it's like baseball somehow has kind of kept this like vintage Americana vibe to it and I wonder if that's where your love for it kind of is rooted a little bit in like just because like I I took a video clip for that thing I did for you of that baseball that uh Rossler yeah Rossler's had that said brisket whatever brisket country on it or brisket department department on it yeah and it was just a it was just a a shitty old baseball with like brisket on scribbled on it on sharpie and I took a couple shots of that and I was just sitting there just like having so much fun and with all that stuff having fun editing it because it's like there's so much texture and like I don't know. It just, it, I don't know how to put, you know, my, my, my finger on it, but it's like, it, it just, it has like a feel to it that I don't feel like maybe other sports do like a, like a, like something that you could pull creative inspiration from. Right. Like if you're supposed to pull creative inspiration from football, you kind of have to go back to like when they had the, when they weren't wearing pads and they had the, <laughs> the single yeah, face guard yeah, yeah. thing. And like, that's when, that's when football had some had like tech not to say, I'm not I'm not a sports guy so yeah. I can say I you know what I mean I'm, I'm not, not a I don't, sports guy I'm not a sports guy hey. okay I can say what I want about sports I'm not a sports guy Capicola <laughs> but no but it's like if you go back into the history of football you see some of that stuff but somehow it seems like baseball between the wood and the and the yeah. and it's in like the sand it's a, th- and like, it's a thinking man sport yeah it really is it's a it's a thinking man sport and I guess Growing up playing baseball, being infatuated with like guys like Ken Griffey Jr. and Nolan Ryan and Ivan Rodriguez and these star athletes, that love and that admiration and affection for baseballs, it lived in me from a young age till I was in high school, played in high school, and then started ninth inning. My love for baseball shined through ninth inning. Stopped doing that, started playing, or actually when I was still doing ninth inning, I was playing Sandlot already, and then oil dogs came and then thrown smoke came and then the next thing will come. So my love for baseball has always been through something, mm-hmm. some sort of outlet. It's always been there and it's always going to be there. My daughter's name is Maris after Roger Maris, the famous Yankee. <laughs> my crazy. son's name's major major leagues, baby major. Um, my, are, you, are you trying to get them into baseball? If they want to okay. cool. Uh, and they, they wrote, they root for the Rangers of course, cause they're my children. But mm-hmm. um, we have two wiener dogs, Ken Griffey wiener after Ken Griffey jr. They're, and then Yogi Barca. Damn, so you're just so you're really about it. We're we're engulfed in it. It's in your DNA. It's it's who we are. It's what people know me as. Um so That's cool though to take like since yeah. It's literally like the theme of everything is just like and I love this because I feel like I do I do something I do something I'm doing something similar in my own way by doing all these things I'm doing and like bringing them together. We're gonna do uh we're gonna do the next little tour run we're gonna do. I want to bring I want to bring a comic with me. Sick. And you should just shake it up because I, I want people to go. You're not supposed to do that. You're not allowed to do yeah. that. That's nobody does that. Break the mold. It's only three bands that sound the same on every tour. Yeah. That's how it should be. And it's like no, let's Why fucking. Not? I'm gonna troll you guys. You know what I mean for 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 twenty minutes you before should. I go on stage, yeah, and just and just see what see how it works. And you know what? I did a little festival thing here where I yeah. had the ten bands and the community. people loved. Yeah, it. they loved it. So the ballroom, yeah, at uh, come and take it. Yeah, come and yeah. take it. That's right. Uh, ballroom would be sick. Though. Ballroom's tight. But come and take it's my that's my that's mm. my uh, that's my night that's my uh, long time or whatever the okay. Wait, it's called the long time. The long time, yeah. So are they the ones opening the bar next to my house? What's the bar called? The Long Time. No. Yeah. That might be a conflict of interest. I don't Possibly. I, I don't think so. I just talked to the owner, Jack, not long ago, and they're opening up a Long Time South in Lockhart. Oh, but like it's a baseball It's thing. another Long Time, but it's in yeah, Lockhart, okay. which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe uh, Possibly. Might be the, ooh, Who knows? Out. Yeah. Know. It's, a great, it's a great place to be. If you've yeah. ever been, it's, it's- Oh, it's so sick. 5404 North Dunlap. Even if you don't- <laughs> Even if you don't like baseball or care about baseball, yeah. just go and get a drink yeah. and watch the game and hang out. Great sponsors they have there. Great, great beverages. Still Austin is They'll there. They'll bring out Schultz to do hot dogs and do concessions, dude. Mm-hmm. And like, there's usually somebody really good in the stage playing music, catch a buzz, smoke a little bit, hang out, watch baseball. Like it's so it's awesome. It's a great place to be at. Um, my first time going there, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. This is wild. I yeah. blogged about it like on Ninth Innings. 
uh, blog at the time. I was mm-hmm. like, let me tell you about this place called a long time. Yeah. So yeah, man. So it feels like it shouldn't like like we shouldn't be allowed to have it there. It's like it feels like a DIY thing that like if they found out they would shut it down. It doesn't feel like Austin. No, it feels like you're out of the city. It, it feels like you're like in like Austin. a small town. Yeah. It's cool as fuck. It's a sick. long time. Um so I'm actually I'm actually kind of curious too like you're so good at connecting people. I feel like I I feel like so I was I I haven't read a lot of books, but clearly I'm not very <laughs> smart. No, but uh but one of the books I've read in the last couple of years is that Tipping Point book yeah, by Malcolm Gladwell and he talks about that there's like three different kinds of people. There's like the maven and the scholar and the connector, right? And like the maven is somebody who or the scholar is someone who like thinks that knowledge is earned Mm -hmm. and they like want people to jump through the same hoops they had to to earn it the maven is somebody who's like your buddy that knows i think this is something they said in the book i haven't read in a while but um the maven is somebody who like it's like your buddy that knows how to save money on everything and he's like dude no no no, you got to do it this way because it's how you say so he's like down to share the information and then the connector is just a person that like brings people together yeah that's like you guys do this really well. You guys do this really well. Like we should get you guys together to do yeah. stuff. And that's what they get off on. Yeah. And it's like some people can be a combination of both, but people are generally never all three. No. Right. Or they can be a combination of two, but generally they're never, never all, all three. three. And so I feel like you and I are definitely the connector type. I'm a connector type person. I love bringing pe- people together and just like, what can we, what can, what if we throw this gas on this or this match on this gasoline? Yeah. Right. And it's like, when you're, you're just like, oh, yeah, we just uh, got Lone Star together with Topo Chico. It's like you do that a lot. That's a big part of what you do, I feel like, and especially when it comes to, like, putting the events together and shit. Yeah, my buddy Chance Morgan in Fort Worth dubbed me last year, Mark, you're a, you're a facilitator. Mm. You facilitate yeah. people and – The facilitator. And brands together. And um, when I first started doing Flint Field, somebody said, hey – you're, you're basically the Swiss Army knife of creative. You can offer X, Y, Z at any given moment at the same time. So I think being the glue amongst people and brands or brands and their audience is how it started and then it ended up being brand to brand. And then it kind of evolved from there. So if a brand comes to me and says, we want to do an event to celebrate this release or bring this to market, we want to do these kinds of in-person experiences, how can we elevate that? That's my. That's where I come in. How can we bring in more people, an artist, a food truck, um, this brand to help out? Just how can we make this idea and just grow on it and mm-hmm. build? And I guess just over the years of being friends and with these uh, brands we work with, it just it's it's panned out to be what it is. And um, I don't know. I don't. I don't have the equation. The the formula of either. how how I got here to, to this day. Yeah. Um, my wife always says nothing good ever comes easy. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a big part of what I do is if you want something that bad, work for it and don't stop until you get it. Do you think people just don't ask for shit enough and they don't reach out enough? Because yeah. I, I feel like yeah, there's some, time. I, I know like Gary V type people, they always say like, like they always say this. So I'm not the first person to say this, but it's like, it's about the ask, dude. Yeah. I've gotten, I haven't ever gotten anything I didn't like ask for and sometimes demand. Yeah. Like in, in demand it because I knew that it was like right for not only for me, but for like other people. Like I want to do this fucking barbecue festival thing. Like I'm going to do this. Like when I did the, uh, the, the guzz fest thing with the comedy barbecue music, yeah. that, that was my, that throwing was smoke. my, that was my bootleg fucking version of throwing smoke, dude. That was my boot. That was, that's what it was. Uh, but it's like, but it's like the worst you're going to get is a no, right? The, that's, can you take a no? If you, if you cannot take a no, you shouldn't be in this business yeah, or any business. Take a no, be okay with taking a no, be okay with being rejected and getting denied, right? having some humility, but also knowing, okay, how can I pivot and figure out how to get from here to there without that brand's help mm-hmm. or without that, without that person's help? Figure out and be resourceful in another way, right? So I think people, yeah, just don't. They're afraid of the no's. They're afraid of the no's. They're afraid to get rejected. And that's part of this business is getting rejected. Or just like this, but it's also too, I feel like a lot of people just don't believe in themselves or their ideas enough. Yeah. And like, 
It's like, no, dude, like that. That's a good idea. Like, just go fucking do it. You know what I mean? Like, just just ask for yeah. ask for shit. Start hitting everybody up. Hey, hey, hey. We're doing this. We're doing this. Throwing smoke thing. I want to get a fucking textile brand in here. I need a need yeah. a leather brand. I need a, somebody who makes soap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I need yeah. I need all these things. I need four liquor brands. Do you guys want to be the four? Oh, you don't? Okay, cool. Because I got other ones. I'll go exactly. hit them up. You know what I mean? And then and then oh no wait 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 wait. I I do want to be a part of this. Yeah. You're gonna go hit up. And so sometimes you, those no's can kind of like for me I I kind of like a no these days. Yeah, play hard be, to get. Well, well, yeah. You okay? You're gonna tell me no, then I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go get another guy you're, to help I'm me. I'm gonna get your competitor, and then you're gonna go. Damn, we should have said yes to that because that throwing smoke was tight, brother. You know what I mean, brother? Does that happen to you? Yeah. Oh, you had some sorries, some I wishes, some FOMO, from some FOMO. Um, oh, I, that's the best place to yeah. be though, because then the next thing you do, they're gonna be like, yes, yeah. Thank yeah. God, thank God, you're doing another thing. Are you cool if I use a restroom? Quick? Yeah. You can use well, what what time what time are we at, Tony? Hour thirty. Let's just wrap. Let's just wrap it. Sure. Up. Yeah. Let's. Or did you? Do you have some some more stuff you want to talk about? I would love to cap. I mean, if you want to. Let's cap it. Let's go to the bathroom yeah. and cap it, and then uh, we'll yeah. go. We'll go hang out. Yeah. We'll be right back. And we're back. Um, my family back home. We're just talking about the freeze thing while you're in the bathroom. It's so funny. My family back home. I know Texas had the big bad freeze, and it was really <laughs> horrible and scarred everybody, but. And like I know, it's like serious. People have died right, and yeah. shit. It's not cool, not funny. But um, it, people in Portland kind of freak out about the snow too. But we like I was talking to my buddy the other day. We don't even like get snow anymore. It's like it just rains and then freezes. It'll snow once and we'll get three inches of snow and then it'll rain, freeze, rain, freeze, rain, freeze. And so they're dealing. They have a they have like four inches of solid ice, like it like a hockey rink on all the streets right now so it's like and then it's funny because they're like please stay indoors here like in austin and it's like we didn't have a single drop of precipitation during the freeze and it wasn't on the like there was no precipitation yeah. it was going to be sunny and like 34 every day during the day or whatever sounds tight and it's fucking 70 <laughs> degrees out here now and it's like it's like people were like, not. Tony was talking about how he was like uh, picking up some extra cash, like doing deliveries and shit when people were like, people were snowed in. And it's like, you guys, there's, go look outside. There's no snow or ice anywhere. Like, we survived. We survived. Yeah. The snowstorm 2024, <laughs> we, to we survived. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, uh, before we go, I you did want to tell, you did want to spill some tea on your favorite barbecue sweet spots. Do you still want to do that? Oh, man. Do you want to talk about your favorite barbecue spots right now? Yeah. You, yeah? You is that okay? To? You're like, check, you're like, is who's going to be mad about this? Who's, who's going to watch this podcast? Who's gonna be? It's all right. Nobody, dude, nobody watches. I've got my personal favorites uh, that they're just favorites to me and not mm -hmm. necessarily the best in Texas, but they're, they're my personal favorites. Uh, yeah. So excited let them rip uh can you talk about them yeah okay you got yours yeah what's your number three <sighs> because you already know my top two <laughs> yeah <laughs> um dude honestly 2m okay 2m Sick. is my curveball number three 2m and then and then Leroy's and interstellar are just yeah. tied for top, top two. two and i'm yeah. biased but i also like every time i eat there like i should be sick of the food now right but they keep making small tweaks and they yeah. keep like it's like new every time i have it like yeah. i just took some guys to uh interstellar a couple of weeks ago and that was the first time in maybe six months that i sat down and Without enjoyed a, a tray yeah. and it wasn't like cold after i shot it you know what yeah. i mean and it's just the boy knows what he's doing those I'll, those folk the crew knows what they're doing john hires the best people yeah. everyone there is fucking john's amazing. a fellow Same cor with corpus boy like me leroy's been testing fucking hot hot little hot sweet hot sweet nothings to give to people just hot sweet little Clay little little fresh little menu items for the brick and mortar just shout like shout out clayton just, shout out cole oh yeah dude those are my dogs i'm trying to get cole in here i'm trying yeah. to get cole to become a stand-up comedian cole is the funniest person you ever got it <laughs> cole is like I'm, i have to get him to just get on the mic and riff because he's so funny when he's drunk off oh, of yeah. like 15 uh, lone star reds yeah Dude, we did that Leroy and Lewis boat party, and he was just like, the minute yeah. we left, he was cracking I up. I helped supply that for the Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That was Everybody was hammered. Did he end up in a Yeti? Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah, he ended up in a Yeti Shout cooler. Out Cole Parkman. Cole Parkman, dude. Arguably the coolest, funniest guy in Texas barbecue. Yeah, it's awesome. 
He's, he is, he's the mo- he's the the. Uh, I really love that guy. He's so important. He's very important. He's so important to the fabric of, really of, of Central Texas barbecue. He's from Houston too. Oh, is yeah, yeah. he is. That's right. Yeah, he's from Houston. Um, but yeah, two M was awesome. Two M's great. It's uh, it's, it's just a little different. They do they do these delicious like uh, pickles, yeah. a pickled assortment. I had Nepales for the first time there, and they were weird, but they were good. Like Did you get the carne asada. I think so. Oh, their pulled I don't pork remember. has that salsa verde on top. Yeah, uh, I need to go back because it's so been good. it's been since before I moved here. Like we, I need to go try tour. out their their new spot. They have a new spot, Blue Lacy in Casterville. I don't know what that is. Oh, burnt bean is so good. I don't burnt think I can great. pick top three, dude. Burnt bean's great. I don't think I can pick a top I three. I don't dude. have. It's hard. Like if I had to be honest, it's like, just like what are some of your favorites? Is like the only conversation I, you can have. When I say top three, I mean like these are the places that I've been to over and over and over again, and they're just to consistent. me it's consistent, consistent, well, consistent, but also, um, you know, just easy to get in and out, or mm. I, I, you know, I'm tight with them or whatever. Um, I love Butters Barbecue. I've never had that down in South Texas. Um, Where is that? It is in. I not, think I've it's seen in Sinton, it. Texas, which is outside of Corpus. Uh, Andrew Soto. I grew up eating his dad's food. Uh, started his own barbecue joint not long ago. And then number two is probably going to definitely be Koi. Like, oh yeah, hard to put him at number one, dude. <laughs> I'm I, just kidding. I, it's like he's not even here, and it's like we should save it for his podcast to gas him up. But yeah, but like. What dude has ever created such a buzz, cooked for Bobby Flay on Food Network and destroyed, and hasn't even opened a restaurant yet? He's still in pop up uh, R and D phase a month. Yeah. once a month. Just like it's so when good. that when that thing opens, yeah. when that thing fucking dude, opens, it dude, it's so good. And it's just it's it's like uh, Houston doesn't have zoning laws, so you can just stick anything you want, any business you want, in a fucking middle of a neighborhood. His space is badass. His space is in the middle of like (laughs) of like a real Houston neighborhood. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just gonna be the whole place is gonna smell like post oak, whole hog, and whole hog, and like Vietnamese spices and shit. It's everything they've. His parents are incredible. They brought us bon mi's from the fucking Vietnamese market, and we're telling us, bro, he made it. I can't really say what he oh, made okay, on Sunday, okay. but he uh, made a new thing. Yeah, it's very good, dude. I'm so excited. It's very, very good. I'm so excited. I'm gonna come yeah. down in February. Oh, Koi. Um, number one, uh, Reese Brothers, San Antonio. Reese. Okay, Reese I have to go to Reese Brothers. We boys. gotta go to Reese Brothers, dude. Have you been there? No. Okay. Those are my He's boys. from San Antonio. Yeah, they're right there outside the Alamo Dome. I've heard nothing but good things about them. Pull up, there. pull up on Nick and Elliot and Gabo. And Monty, they're they're yeah. great dudes. Uh, Reese Bros number one. Reese Bros number one, baby. Yeah. Really. Excellent, excellent, excellent. What's food. their what? Do they have a claim to fame like the peach tea burn ins? Oh or man! Or do, do they just are they just kind of doing the the holy trinity just like no, really they, well? They take they take a classic like um, South Texas kind of Hispanic influence deep into like a Tex Mex barbecue sort of realm with mm-hmm. their flavors and their presentation. Um, they do a torta. They do like. Three or four different kinds of torta, but they do torta. they do some tortas that are outstanding. They do okra beans. Can't explain how good it is. Damn. Um what is the, what the hell is an okra? Oh, it's, it's like okra ch- in beans. Right. But it's it's it's, like, it's okay. fire. It is fire. Poblano Mac. Oh. Fire. Whoa. Just whoa. But their briskets off the chain. Their ribs are are insane. Um, I'm over here gassing them up. To You're making my, me hungry right now. To all my other fellow barbecue friends in all over Texas, yeah. I do appreciate and I like all you guys. This is just my personal favorite. That's everybody's don't, everybody's got their don't pick, hate, and the don't and, hate your and, boy. and those picks will rotate. Everybody yeah. kind of gets their chance being somebody's yeah. favorite out here. Yeah, you know that's how it is. But let's it's, start. Let's start talking about our favorites. Why not? You're just, yeah. You're you're giving your friends flowers, right? You're right. Giving these people yeah, flowers. Yeah, goes so back. Like, that goes back to what we were talking about. Don't be afraid of talking. If if your feelings are hurt because somebody's mentioning their favorites, it's, it's not a, a hate or diss to you. It's just that's their just their favorites, right? So like. Well, yeah, and then it's like go back, you know, and just be like, what else can we? What can we tweak? What can we tweak? What can we add? Sure. Like those people are inspiring me. You yeah. know, that's the cool thing about John. John's like inspired about other people's like, cooking and had he does I the love, spaced cowboy stuff that. Oh man, he had Don. I can't they wait did, to have him in here. Don was part of the uh, space cowboy series, I think. Yeah, or Hector from uh, Hector was too. Um, yeah. but just because Interstellar is not on my top three doesn't mean they're not they're great. I love Interstellar's food. Yeah absolutely amazing i just haven't had enough yeah you know what i mean oh yeah these places i've I've had multiple multiple times so yeah yeah um 
But yeah, man, give your friends their flowers. That's I like that. Give your friends. I, that's the, the moral of the story here. To all my homies and friends, I miss y'all. Because that's why. <laughs> I mean, that's why I feel like we're here talking today. Is because like I, we like each other's yeah. shit, and it makes us want to do our our craft better. You Stop know what hyping I mean? up these people you've never met on Instagram. These mm. these creatives in California, New York, or in the desert who have millions of followers. Peter McKinnon does not like need your likes or your praises. Start yeah, praising your homies. I don't even know if he edits his own photos anymore. Like they're all photos <laughs> like, of on. him. You know what it's, I mean? The, I lo- and I mean, don't get me wrong. I, we we owe it all to Pete. Pete Pete walks so we can run, dude. I've got he's his the, I've got his V and D filters in the bag. I he's I know he's the Aaron Franklin <laughs> of, of photography for us. He made photography cool uh, to to yeah. millennial to younger people. What I'm saying is, you know, like people gas up these big. Right, creative celebrities and man, like take in find inspiration from your homies if you can. You know brother. what I mean? Like when, I wherever it. you can. I love your stuff. I love your stuff, dude. I'm I now shooting in 60 frames because of you, dude. Hell yeah! Like, I you, you got to have that flexibility, baby. Man. What if you want to slow? What if man. you want to just slow I, things I, down, Taylor like Gorman, Luther Vandross, like, dude? Taylor Gorman, like, <laughs> stop, dude. Come on. Dude, we need to do something where I send you footage and you edit it. Come on. I love I like your fucking your Lutz and I'll way show you my Lutz. Up. I'll, sh- <laughs> I'll, I'll show you my Lutz. Lutz if you show me yours, dude. <laughs> show me your Lutz. <laughs> I'll show you my Lutz. Well, yeah, dude, gas up your friends uh and, you know, take inspiration from people. That's the moral of the story. Plug your shit, man. Mark Champion. Right here. Mark Champion TX, flintfieldtx.com. Um drink Lone Star beer, eat Texas barbecue, tell your mommy you love them. Watch baseball. Watch baseball. Support. Go Rangers. Go Rangers. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Maris. Hi, Major. Love you guys. Thanks for coming on, brother. Love you, dog. Let's go eat. Let's go eat, dude. Come Run on, that outro. Go.